South Africa, where we're at the knockout stage of the African Nations Championship. In Cape Town, the two ties there see Zimbabwe take on Mali, while Morocco face Nigeria. The last 12 months have seen a real upturn in Nigeria's fortunes under coach Stephen Keshi. The coach himself has his sights set on further success. It wasn't long ago that Nigerian football had to endure wave upon wave of disappointment. A low point came in 2011 when they failed to qualify for the 2012 Africa Cup of Nations. But that appeared to sharpen the focus of the Nigerian Football Federation. In came Stephen Keshi as coach and he delivered at AFCON less than two years later. Nigeria's first since 1994. Qualification for the 2014 World Cup followed. This is a man who appears to have a golden touch. His latest achievement, taking this young and inexperienced squad to the quarterfinals of the African Nations Championship. And they now face Morocco for a place in the semi-finals. Very good team. And that's how it should be. If you qualify for Shine, it should be a good team. And every, I think all the 16 teams that came in here were a good team. And even if you didn't qualify for the quarterfinal, it doesn't mean that you're bad. It's just that that is, that is the game. Some will qualify, some will not qualify. So uh, we, they qualify, we, we thank God. And, and our, uh, Morocco is one of, one of those teams. Nigeria is also. The, we'll see what happens on Saturday. In truth, having lost their opening game to Mali, the pressure was on Nigeria to win the final match of the group against the host South Africa. That this squad came through that test was particularly pleasing for Keshi, but he feels his side are playing without the burden of expectation. I'm not sure there's a pressure on my team. There was, there was never a pressure. We just came in here just to have fun and for the players to gain experience in playing higher level of football in Africa and and that's it. We, we're not under any pressure, they're having fun and that's what I want them to have, fun. To underline the high regard in which Keshi is held, the mass outpouring of goodwill for his 52nd birthday this week appeared to take even the coach by surprise. Wow. I think the only thing I can say is wow. Um, it's something I never expected in my life. Um, if it's true that it's, it's been going on and on in internet, wishing me happy birthday, well, all I have to do is to tell them thank you. I salute, I salute Nigerians. The tide is very much with Nigerian football right now. AFCON winners and a World Cup to look forward to. But an extended run here at the African Nations Championship would not only add to that impressive list of achievements, it would also provide a clear indication that the level of football in the country can improve yet further in the future. Dan Williams, CCTV, Cape Town. Democratic Republic of Congo's football team, the Leopards, have given their fans cause for great celebration after reaching the last eight at the ongoing African Nations Championships. DRC beat Burundi 2-1 in their final group match on Wednesday to finish second in Group D with six points. They play Ghana in the quarterfinals on Sunday. DRC won the inaugural competition in 2009 and will be hoping to become the first team to win the title twice in the absence of the only other team to ever win the competition, Tunisia. Their fans in South Africa believe the team has what it takes to achieve this feat. As a Congolese citizen, I'm really delighted. I did not want to follow any of their games after they lost their second game, but I am happy now to support my team again. We have great players. Even if some of the best have left, we still have other guys who are playing very well. So we will win the cup. Egypt's Mohamed Salah is heading to England after Chelsea agreed to a deal to sign the midfielder from Swiss champions Basel. The fee is said to be around $18 million and the 21-year-old is yet to agree to personal terms. Chelsea's Premier League rivals Liverpool had held talks with Basel with the hope of making Salah their first signing of the January transfer window. The Blues agreed to sell Juan Mata to Manchester United on Wednesday. $61 million, and it seems this spurred Chelsea to move swiftly for the Egyptian. Salah becomes Chelsea's second African signing of the January transfer window after the arrival of Bikonabe's Bertrand Traor. 
Roger Federer's quest for an 18th Grand Slam title came to an end Friday as world number one Rafael Nadal knocked him out of the Australian Open. Federer, who'd seen off Murray to reach his 11th consecutive Australian Open final, was up against a man he had only beaten twice in 10 meetings. Nadal didn't seem overly troubled by a blister, which had almost cost him a semi-final spot. He won the first set 7-6 before racing through to the next two sets 6-3 and 6-3 to reach the final. Pedra continues to seek for a Grand Slam title since winning Wimbledon in 2012, while Nadal goes on to play another Swiss, Stanislas Warinka, for the title.